how did you end up interning for House Speaker Tip O'Neill uh, while you were in college, who was then working with President Ronald Reagan? And what specifically did you take out of that experience? What did you learn from interning well, at the White House? I got the job because I, had apply I wanted to be a cop. And I had applied to be a cop. And they told me I had the job. And then they pulled the job offer because they had this set-aside rule where they had, they had already had surprise. They had too many white Irish kids from Boston, right? <laughs> so, what else is there back then in Boston? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so too many white Irish kids in South Boston. It's like, no kidding. So they pulled the job offer. So I was complaining. And my father was like, hey, you got to stop bitching. Like, I don't want to hear it. Go talk to your congressman. So I marched yeah. down to Watertown Square where there was a little tiny congressional office. And I walked in, there was a guy named John Carver there. I remember it well. And I went in and I started complaining. And while I was complaining, he took out a piece of paper and he was writing a note. And I thought he was just taking notes of the meeting and he folded it up and, and he said, do you really want to be a cop? And I said, yeah. And he said, why don't you go to college? And because he had asked me earlier where I got accepted. I said, Georgetown and St. Anselm's. And one I had a hockey scholarship to and one, one I didn't. And he said, why don't you just go to Georgetown get an education. If you still want to be a cop, come see me when you get out. And he said, when you get to Washington, go to Tip O'Neill's office and hand this envelope to a woman named Dolores Snow. So I got to Georgetown. I went to Tip O'Neill's office. I handed her the envelope. She opened it and she said, when do you want to start? That's amazing. And that, that's what I said. Yeah, you're that's like, amazing. You're, you seem to be your whole life in the right place at the right time. I am so that lucky. <laughs> Tracy, you have no idea how blessed I've been. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I can't it, imagine that happening today. I, I don't know. It just, just sounds it's so... Just, if you have a positive attitude and you're always looking forward and you don't spend a lot of time bitching and whining, a lot like of your life. parents taught you not to do, the young, among others. When, you, when there's <laughs> 11 of you hanging around the house and you're the youngest, that, there's not a lot of time for bitching. But that produces an attitude that allows you to, to find luck. And if you listen, if you listen, it's out there if you listen.